Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning back into my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, hi, how are you? My name is Rosa. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated. We have our special guest here today, Chai. She's just chilling. She has her oops, little bone, which I just dropped, and she's going to go grab it right now. But we are here to say hi, hello. We haven't been here in a really long time. Why is that? So let me give a little explanation as to why I haven't been on YouTube. I like the short, sweet, and to the point. Um, I'm taking some classes. Work has been crazy. I'm working 40 plus hours every day, you know, personal life, trying to get things together. That is why I haven't been on here. But, you know, I am looking for a strong comeback this summer. Now is summer. I'm ready and we're going to get started. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of the major areas of the laboratory. So I didn't make like a full huge list. It's just more of like things in my opinions that I saw while I was working in these departments. I'm going to start off with microbiology. So microbiology, the pros of microbiology are you really get to use your brain. There is so much that you need to know for microbiology and it is a very hands-on type of department of the laboratory. You do use your knowledge that you gain from school and also continue an education to be able to identify what kind of bacteria is growing on a plate and as well as running certain tests, you do some gram staining as well. So I think it is really good to keep you sharp. A lot of people who are in micro love micro. Don't get me wrong. I think it's cool. I didn't love it. So I'm going to go into some quick cons that I saw when I was in micro. So in microbiology, you have to read um, petri dishes. There's petri dishes. You have the specimen of choice. Like it can be either sputum, it can be urine, it can be... Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, those are the only two I remember right now. But usually plates, there's some type of human specimen on them. They incubate in a room when there's like a 37 degree incubator, I think. And there might be some other temperatures too. Really don't remember because I didn't actually work on micro, but I did do my clinical rotation in micro. And then from there, they incubate overnight. And then the tech in the morning gets the plates and you read them. You look at the plates, see how many colonies have grown, you count them. And then also some labs use a MALDI to help identify which bacteria it is. And some of the things you have to do that I didn't really like is that you have to look at like the zones of hemolysis to see like the color of the colony, you have to see the texture of the colony. And for me, that was really hard to do because it's really subjective. It's pretty much just more of like what you see as a tech. And I didn't feel my skills were very strong. So I felt like it was kind of hard, especially if you don't have a MALDI at your lab to be able to kind of interpret that. Another thing too I did not like about micro is that you get all types of samples. You get sputum, urine, you get fecal samples. Like it's a lot of gross stuff. And I hate the smell of all of that stuff. Like you walk into micro and you can smell everything. Like it just smells gross. And yes, there is like um, biohazard hoods to be able to kind of like get rid of the smell. Oh, Chai has a zoomie, sorry guys. But she'll be back. There is a smell and it's just gross to me and sometimes I would get nauseous and I just did not enjoy that and I knew I didn't want to work in micro. It was just too much. I didn't like the smell and I didn't really understand it that much. I'm going to go into hematology now. Hematology, some pros of that. You also get to use your brain a lot. Actually, you probably do that for all of these because you are using the knowledge that you know. There are cells you need to identify in hematology. You run a blood sample. You count how many cells are in that specific sample. It's under a hundred times magnification when you're doing cell counts. So people have all different types of cells. We have uh, red blood cells, white blood cells. There are things called lymphocytes, eosinophils, macrophages, all types. And a lot of different types of cells can be a lot of different types of things. So let's say there's a cell that's... um proliferating something that looks very abnormal. The point of hematology is to make sure that the blood cells are normal, there's a normal count of all the blood cells, and if there isn't, to be able to identify that cell to help in that diagnosis, and then it'll be read by a pathologist after the tech has read it. So 
I think it's really great and it's really awesome because you actually do feel like you get to make a difference when you are working in hematology. I actually kind of enjoyed it a little bit more the more I started working in hematology. One of the cons that I had and a major con that might be a deter for a lot of people is that you're pretty much under the microscope or just looking at cells all day every day. If you have cellivision, that's awesome. You don't have to be under the microscope to look at the cells, which I really like cellivision. I use it in my clinicals and my lab that I was working at was getting cellivision, but unfortunately I left before I was able to get a chance to work with it. But before that, we were actually doing everything under a microscope and I get so nauseous under the microscope and a lot of people actually do get nauseous when looking down at the microscope. Like I could only do it for so long and luckily, I wasn't really at a high volume hospital to be able to have to like be under the microscope 24 seven. Thank goodness. Cause I would have not been able to do it. It can be a little bit repetitive as well. So like I said, you are pretty much looking at cells, differentiating them all day. Some of the negative things that can come with that is that you might get some cells confused or from seeing them so often, you might just see them and be like, Oh my gosh, like this is too much. Like I'm literally doing the same thing every day. If you are working in a department full time, if you're switching around it's probably not as bad but it can get a little bit repetitive so that's what i think about that oh she's back oh, she's tired you have the zoomies mamas zoomies sorry you can't see her too good it's just then i don't want like the whole bed to show and it's yeah but you can see her right here she's here chilling <laughs> okay next department we have is chemistry so chemistry was one of my favorites Besides blood bank, which will be our last one. So chemistry, what do we do in chemistry? So in chemistry, basically what we're doing in chemistry is we're taking off plasma samples and we're checking to see different analytes in the patient's body to make sure that everything is okay. So some of the things include thyroid stimulating hormone. We can check the levels of chloride. You can check bicarbonate. You can check a whole bunch of other ones. Like there's literally hundreds that you can check in chemistry. And you can do some drug testing as well. Like if you want to find out if a patient's on any type of stimulant, you can find out, such as like marijuana. Hey, what do you got, Chai? Hey, mama, no. <laughs> Sorry, she's like eating at my notebook. But chemistry is, I think it's actually not too bad. Depending in the lab you work in, you might just be a bench tech and just literally just working completely on chemistry for the full day which means you'll be aliquoting plasma into different tubes and running them on the analyzer. And then the person who is on the analyzer just makes sure that all the levels are normal. And if they're abnormal and out of range, you will be calling down to the doctor and letting them know that something is critical. If the critical will be in red, something that's like, you know, kind of a little off, but not completely in the danger zone is like yellow. And, you know, that's just like, you know, it's a little abnormal, but nothing critical where you have to call down to the doctor and they need to, like, you know, do something fast. And, you know, everything that's in range will be within the reference range. So in chemistry, you do have to know some reference ranges. I think it's pretty cool if you like kind of doing the reference range stuff and you're pretty comfortable with working with different types of analyzers. Because in chemistry, you do have to change a lot of reagents because a lot of reagents are used. You have to do QC on the instruments, which you have to do for all instruments in the laboratory. But I feel like chemistry is one of the ones where you kind of are doing it a lot more frequently. And some of the pros I see with chemistry are that it can also be quite repetitive. Um, I feel like it's pretty easy. So if you really want to challenge, maybe chemistry isn't for you. I feel like when you're learning it in school, it is a lot more complicated because you need to learn the different types of reasoning as to why someone's levels may be out of range. But once you're working in the field, you don't really use that very much. So it's just a matter of like, you know, making sure everything's in range. And if not, call the criticals, changing reagents and aliquotic plasma. So it's not really too hard. And lastly, I'm going to go into blood bank. So blood bank was my absolute, absolute favorite, but there was also a lot of challenges with blood bank as well. So some of the pros that I found in blood bank was that it was really fun and hands-on. In my lab, we actually got to do some, some manual blood reading. So we would actually put the reagents in the tube with the patient's blood sample or plasma sample to get their forward and reverse um, blood type, which I really enjoyed. And we also used the echo, the Galileo echo. And that's a machine where you actually just throw the sam patient sample on with a pink top tube. You put it on there, you get the little discs ready 
and get them on the machine and then maybe about like 15 minutes or so you can find out a patient's blood type. So there's two different ways to do it. It really just depends on the matter of what kind of lab you're working at. And I thought it was really cool because you do get to, you know, figure out a person's blood type for yourself. And if a patient has an antibody, then you also get to look at panels and run the panels and you have to actually do them by hand. And I think that was so fun because it's like a puzzle every time. It's kind of like finding out something new and it's just kind of rewarding. And the fact that you get to like, you know, use your brain, use your knowledge and it just the puzzle aspect I loved about it so much. And some of the cons I found with blood bank is that if someone has a transfusion reaction, good luck because it is stressful. You have doctors calling you, you down, calling the nurses. They are wanting blood so quick. They don't even care sometimes. And if you know, if they're like bleeding out, like give them an O negative unit, like worry about their antibodies later. It can be very stressful and it can take time because you know, if you have to put something on the machine and then if they have an antibody, you have to do it all by hand and you obviously don't want to make any mistakes. So you want to do everything really carefully, but also very quickly. And that can be such a huge stressor. Don't get me wrong, such a huge stressor. And yeah, blood bank can be a trip, but it is a good one. And I still love it because I love the fact that, you know, it's a puzzle. It's a mystery kind of, but you get to really use your brain and your knowledge. And I think it was just cool. So I hope you guys like this video. Thank you again so much for watching it. Chai's playing with the Hello Kitty on my chair right now. And I hope this was able to teach you some pros and cons of different areas of the laboratory and what I think about them. So yeah, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you don't, tell me why. Or if you did like it, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't wait to make more videos for you guys. I'm so happy I'm back here on YouTube and I hope to see you again here soon. Oh,